Welcome to Baptist Bible Church Morning Worship Service. Let us start the month of May with a glorious heart and high hopes. Shall we all stand? And as we sing, to God be the glory. On the first verse, ready, sing. life and not home for sin and open the life gate that all may go in praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he has done oh perfect redemption the purchase of God to every believer the promise of God the blessed offender who truly On the last verse. Great things he had promised, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But the and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus will Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory. The next song that we're going to sing reminds us of God's holy city and the security of those who are saved by His grace. So for our next song, let us sing, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. If you know this song, please sing it with all your heart. On the first verse, ready, sing. Glorious things of Thirst 
us wage grace which like our Lord the giver never fails from age to age on the last verse Savior if of Zion city I through grace a member and let the world decide our pity I will glory in thy name fading is the worldly pressures all their foes their pomp and stroke solid joys and lasting treasure none but Zion's children know praise God for that wonderful singing uh, may I request everyone to please get their Bibles for their congregational Bible reading. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 2, to be led by Brother Dan Lontok. Psalm, chapter 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that seated in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. They shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the degree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them on pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Let us pray. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, once again, we're so grateful and thankful that we can come to church, Lord, and worship you together. Lord, I just pray that we continue to uh, guide and direct us today as we worship thee. Lord, I thank you that we have the freedom to uh, worship and open your word and read it, O Lord. And now, Lord, I do pray for the Holy Spirit that would speak to hearts today, Lord. I just pray for uh, our speaker this morning uh, that you will use in a very special way. Lord, bless each part of the service today for the choir as they sing. The, the message of the song would encourage us, O Lord, and would bring honor and praise to thee. Lord, we just commit this service unto thee. Lord, I just pray that even today, if there are visitors here that are not yet saved, Lord, today that they may come to know thee as their personal Savior. Again, Lord, we just commit this day unto thee, for in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the choir.
Thank you, choir. Tunay nga po na dakila ang ating Diyos at karapat dapat ng ating pagsamba. May I request everyone to stand up as we continue our worship through our singing. Uh, we will be singing the song, We Have a Story to Tell. And we may we be reminded about our responsibility to obey what Christ has said to us to proclaim the gospel. All together, all first verse. Ready, sing. We've a story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and mercy, a story of peace and light, a story of peace and light. For the darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright. And Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. With a message to give to the nations, that the Lord who reigned above has sent us His Son to save us and show us that God is love and show us that God is love for the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth the kingdom of love and light on last verse We've a Savior to show to the nations Who the path of sorrow has trod That all of the world's great peoples May come to the truth of God Might come to the truth of God For the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright And Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth The kingdom of love and light You may be seated well, Thank you, Brother Evan, for the wonderful saying Good morning! Morning. morning! Welcome to Baptist Bible Church It's a brand new day, it's a brand new week, and it's a brand new month and we praise the Lord for the opportunity that He has gathered us together to worship Him. Well, it's Labor Day today, amen? And amen. And what a great privilege and joy it is to be in the service of the King, amen? amen? Amen. So, let me just remind you, maybe some of you are asking, how can I serve the Lord in this local church? If you're a member of Baptist Bible Church, you are ex required... And God expects you to be able to serve Him in this local assembly. And how maybe some of you are asking, how can I serve the Lord? Well, there are so many opportunities to serve the Lord in this church. Maybe let's start with our kids' ministry. Okay? We have every Saturdays, we have our extension classes. People are volunteers. We need volunteers to go out every Saturdays at 3 o'clock. Just beneath, there's near our vicinity and be able to uh, teach children about the Bible. Some of you may be able to lead them to singing, some you uh, storytelling, and also some of you may be able to have some crafts and some uh, provide snacks for the children. So th they go out every Saturdays, okay? And then at, uh, every Sundays, we have our Sunday school also for the kids. So if you'd like to be able to uh, work in that area of ministry, then you can approach Sister Grace and Brother William. They're in charge of that. Okay, another thing, if you would like to join the choir, do you, did, did you hear the, say, the, sing, uh, the choir sing? Amen. They always do a great job. So if you want to join the choir and use your, uh, your voice for the Lord, then you can approach uh, our music, uh, Sister Joy or Sister Kim or Sister Ano, or uh, those in charge, Sister uh, Kriya Brian, those in charge with, uh, uh, with the choir, and you will be able to sing for the Lord. And also, how, uh, how, how else? Well, what else can you do for the Lord? Well, you can attend every sun Sunday at 9 o'clock and bring someone with you and let us study the Word of God through our combined Sunday school. Okay, there are lots of opportunities to be able to serve the Lord. Uh, we start at 9 o'clock for our Sunday school. Uh, we are studying what the things we do here in church that glorifies God. What do we do? Why are we doing that such things uh, in our services? So they, we are studying all those things. This morning, we had just finished why the Word of God. So next Sunday, please be here at 9 o'clock. 
and bring someone with you and let us study the Word of God together. And also, another area of ministry that you can join is our prayer ministry. Every Wednesday, we have our prayer meeting uh, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. You can be here and be able to join us as we pray for one another. If not, there's a list uh, outside. You can bring it home and be one of our prayer warriors. We need prayer uh, warriors in our church so that uh, we can be able to uh, encourage one another in, as we serve the Lord. So you need prayers, you can read, write it down in a piece of paper, bring, give it to the church, or you can call the church or drop the prayer request in our offering bag later, and then we will be including it in our prayer list. And then what else? If you're, uh, ang tanong, kailan ba dapat magsimula? Oh, walang, wala pong retirement dito, any age will do, but we encourage our young people uh, to always serve the Lord. That's why we have our saya every Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. every Sunday so that we can be able to have fellowship and also learn more about the Word of God and to be able to serve the Lord at a very young age. Okay, saan po ba? Mayroon pa po ba pwedeng paglingkuran ng Panginoon? Marami pa po. If you know how to play an instrument, you can join our orchestra. If you would like to, uh, if you are good in uh, Bible study, meron po kami mga Bible study po. Uh, we have the Young Men's Fellowship, uh, Bible study every uh, Thursdays, uh, every uh, Thursdays of every month. Yung mga ladies po, every Fridays. And also, sa ating pong uh, adult, meron po din tayo every Saturdays at 3, 9, and at 8 p.m. So, you'd like to join us as we have our Bible study. That will be fine also. If you'd like to uh, have your own Bible study at home, rin po yan. you can be able to use your home for the Lord. And also, what else? You can give to the Lord. You can give your time, talent, and also your treasure to the Lord. We are now on our week 22 or our missions giving. And today we're so uh, glad that we have a missionary that will be speaking with us today. So let's pray for him. And also, uh, all our missionaries that we are supporting uh, in our uh, ministry of uh, evangelizing, sharing Christ the Savior to all the world. We have 69 missionaries. Uh, supported missionaries, foreign missionaries, and uh, 14 local pastors. Okay, I was, and then continue to pray for our missionary for this week, Norberto Coros Jr. from Accra, Ghana. So we have already, our missionaries are also going to Ghana, right sir? So we already have three uh, missionaries that are uh, going to Ghana. So let's pray for them as we reach more people for the Lord. And uh, also, how can I also uh, serve the Lord? Well, next Sunday is Mother's Day. How many mothers do we have right now? Taas po yung kamay ng mga mothers. Yeah, next Sunday will be your special day. We're so glad for our mothers. Uh, and next Sunday also, we're going to have a special lunch fellowship. Yeah, Sister Sherry, after, before we are dismissed, we'll be able to invite you and see uh, and say uh, how can be able to join well uh, we have a list outside if you like to join you can list your name uh, the cost uh, it will be in, uh, discussed in details later after our service so last, last, uh, before we are dismissed sister sherry will make the announcement for that okay so i think that's all for announce do we have anyone visiting with us for the very first time meron po ba sa ating kalagitnaan this is your first time to be at baptist bible church meron po ba Meron po ba? Can you please stand up, ma'am? Yes, good morning. We're so glad that you came. Meron pa po ba sa ating kalagitnaan? Meron pa po ba? Meron pa po ba? I would like to welcome from our for the very first time. Uh, for the very first time from our meet. Brother, Mr. and Mrs. J. and Rose Ann Rapacon. Can you please stand up, sir? Yeah, let's give you a big hand. Your sister Rose later will be coming to join our church. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's also stand up and let's sing our welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. A Christian, welcome here. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian, welcome here. Hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian, welcome here. You may be seated as uh, we listen to a special number.
leave a heavenly mansion? Why choose a simple store? Why wander poor and homeless? The King and Lord of all Why heal a lowly beggar? Why cause the blind to see? The light of all creation Shining there for me it was for me he cried, for me he died, for me he shed his blood upon a tree. It was for me he came, for me his shame, for me oh praise his name, it was for me. Why stay in all his garden? Why spend the night in prayer? Why leave his mother crying? Why set Barabbas free? The spotless Lamb of Heaven even there for me Why climb the dreadful mountain Why suffer agony Why give his blood a fountain Spilled and broken, flowing free When he walked the road to Calvary Gave his life so willingly Broken then the rose of Sharon died for me it was for me, he cried, for me, he died, for me, he shed his blood upon a tree. It was for me, he came, for me, his shame, for me, oh, praise his name, it was for me. The King who came from heaven To the cry there is no room Now must lay his weary body In a cold and borrowed tomb But a grave it would not hold him that lost its victory The risen Lord of glory Is living now for me For me It was for me He cried for me He died for me He shed his blood upon it was for me, he came for me, his shame for me, oh praise his name, it was for me, for me, oh praise his name, it was for me.
Ghana is a country which lies in the western part of Africa. Accra, which is the national capital of Ghana, have a population of 2.5 million people and Kumase with a population of 3.4 million people. English is the official language of Ghana and Akan is the local language of Ghana, spoken by 80% of the indigenous Ghanaians. Akwaba, that is Akan in English, welcome to Ghana, the land of freedom of religion. The time has come for me to prove to you that I am an angel of God. I'm coming to prove to you I'm a rare angel of God. Yes. This is the time to prove to you I'm a rare angel of God. Pray and tell Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my father, and I, Angelo Bini, my son, that whatever you need, we should do it for you. As we follow after Christ, we all can be one. We can lead one to the Savior. Then together we can tell the world that Jesus is so they used to ply their trade undercover and in obscure places. But that is no more. Thanks to the advent of technology, Odilia Ajman Prempe explores how fetish priests and malams are using Facebook, billboards, radio and television to reach their clients. Titles and names like Malamodumja Spiritual Man, Juju Powers, Nana Kwekusika, Riasi Ehun, Sunsumu Ehun, these platforms has images like snakes, strange bears, pots decorated with red materials, the skull of human and animal. The billboards announcing these activities can be seen at Vantage Point and on new media and even door-to-door -door advertising. These practitioners intrude in people's privacy with posts and messages on Facebook pages. Fear and panic grip most people on new media upon seeing messages and requests. So we ask, what has called for the open business amongst juju men, malams and fetish priests? Is the way if we each one reach one. I got saved on November 23, 2015 in Doha, Qatar, under the ministry of Pastor John Lee in Avayas. Though I was attending church faithfully, but I was not saved until that faithful day, the Lord spoke to me through Romans chapter 11 verse 6 and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. 2018, I resigned from my job in Doha, Qatar and all that I was doing there to come to La Loma Bible College and Institute. We're happy to, today to see someone uh, going to a place where the gospel is most needed, particularly there in Africa. Of course, you know from the slides that, and the video that he has presented that uh, his name is Adams Darko Adai. And uh, he's from Ghana. And he came he over here to be trained for for the ministry. He has mentioned a while ago of the ministries that he is involved in. Uh, let me mention it again. He is involved in soul winning, discipleship, Bible studies, transport ministry, and I assume that it has something to do with bringing people to the church. 
and then street preaching, good news classes, prison ministry, and audiovisual ministry, and all of these uh, from 2015 in, in, to 2022 in Qatar, and here while he is in Bible school. So, as he had said, that he has been converted through the preaching of the Word of God there in um, Doha. And then he came in here uh, for training in 2018, and he has graduated in 2021. So, it's very important that we send missionary out there. It's because that someone sent missionary there in Doha, Qatar, that he came to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he plans back to go to his place in Ghana, and he told me that it is about 300 kilometers away from, uh, from Accra, where Pastor Felix Arma is ministering. But it's a good place by which they would be able to send someone who will bring the pure gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray for him as he makes plans to return there in 2023. Okay, so I have now... Uh, I am now going to welcome to the pulpit, and we as a church should welcome uh, missionary Adams Darko Adai as he preached to us God's word. Shall we give him a uh, round of applause? Thank you, Pastor Dennis. Good morning, church. Is it okay if I can use this mic? Testing mic. Testing mic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will say I'm much delighted to be here this morning to be with you. I have been in this church several days, but this is my first day on Sunday or to be with you during your worship service because of my brother from Ghana, Brother Anthony Mensa. I usually come here during the Saturdays and sometimes Fridays so that you go and have some fellowship in SM. So basically the people here knows me, but most of the church members, this is the first time maybe they are meeting me. As I stated in my video presentation, I got saved in 2015 in Doha, Qatar, under the ministry of Pastor John Eli Narvaez. Before I traveled to Doha, Qatar in 2014, I was attending Presbyterian Church Anna, in the city of Kumasi, where I was staying for eight years, but I was not saved. So when I got saved in 2015, years that I am in church, but I never have the opportunity to listen to the clear gospel presentation. So when I got saved, I was wondering. Thank you. Thank you. So when I got saved in 2015, I was wondering why is it like that? So thinking and meditating all those times that I was going to church, then I remembered one Sunday morning during our Sunday school class, as Brother Arvi was leading this morning, one of the church members asked that very important question found in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 31. He asked, What must I do as a person or a Christian? so that I will know for sure when I die, I will go to heaven. But the answer the Sunday school teacher gave was something different. He answered, believe on Jesus Christ and obey the Ten Commandments, which we know according to the word of God. It is not like that. Who can be saved by obeying the Ten Commandments? No one. So when I was meditating on that incident and looking at that church on Sunday morning with regular attendance of about 500 to 600 people in that church, having no hope for their soul when they die, it breaks my heart. 
So I started praying and asking the Lord to send missionaries to Ghana. So whenever I would pray and said, Lord, please send missionaries to Ghana so that they will go and tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. By this time, I did not know missionary Felix Arma was in Accra as a missionary there. So whenever I made this prayer, the response that I get from the Lord is, what are you doing? And I answered and said, Lord, I'm only asking you to send missionaries to Ghana. And you know what I am doing here in Qatar. So if you are asking me this, it seems like I don't get what you mean to me. So this continued for almost one and a half years. Several times I will pray and ask God to send missionaries to Ghana. But all the response that comes back to me is, what are you doing? So in 2017, during our World Mission Conference, thinking if this is the Lord calling or just some emotional desire that I'm having, the Lord confirmed to me that it is time that I need to surrender my life unto him, which I did surrender, the things God wants me to surrender unto him, which was possession, my personality, my pride, and my peace. But I was holding on to my plan that I did not surrender unto the Lord in 2017. So as I was still there planning to go back someday to reach my people, in February 2018, during our church anniversary, one evening, I prayed before going to church and said, Lord, please speak to me tonight. Clearly, in a way, I will understand. If you are the one calling me to surrender my life and go back to my country and reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And before this time, my missionary pastor, Pastor John Elena Vias, never knew the Lord has been calling me because when I did surrender my life, I did not tell him. As I stated, I was still holding on to my plans, how I will go back to start the ministry. So during that, our anniversary evening worship service, he said to our guest speaker, it was the father of Brother RV, by name Pastor Irenio Bukton. He was our guest speaker for that anniversary. He said to him, Pastor, this is the man I told you I've been praying for him, that someday he will go back to his home country and reach them with the gospel. During the worship service, he asked if I was in the church, and he made that statement. And that statement was clear and direct. So in that evening, I understood clearly it is the Lord who is directing me to go back to my home country and reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So two months later, I resigned from my job in Doha, Qatar. I was working there as an electrical testing and commission technician. So I resigned from my job in May and came to the Philippines in 2018, that same year in La Loma Bible College and Institute under the ministry of the late Pastor Stephen Gilbert Tokero, now under the leadership of Pastor Ramil L. Olalia, to come and train and prepare myself and go back to Ghana and reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So my plan is that by the end of second quarter 2023, I will go back to Ghana. And when I go, I already have plans with missionary Felix Arma that I'll be partnering with him for some time before I will move to Kumasi, which is the largest city in the region in terms of population. Accra is the largest city in terms of size, but in terms of population, Kumasi is the largest uh, region or the city in terms of population. So Lord willing, my plan is that when I go, as the Great Commission says, we should teach or evangelize and decide, uh, baptize and disciple them. And those people that the Lord will bring, someday we will also train and send them out as local and foreign missionaries. So church, together we all can make a big difference in the life of Ghanaians. Reaching them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
one by one. So thank you. This morning, if you have your Bible here with you, I would like you to stand up and open to the book of First Kings, chapter 19, verse 19 to 21. The book of First Kings, chapter 19, verse 19 to 21. We will all read together. First Kings, chapter 19, verse 19 to 21. If you are there, say amen. amen. Let's all read together. Right? Let's go. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instrument of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did it. Then he arose and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. The title of the message this morning is Burning the Bridge. Burning the Bridge. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for giving us this privilege to come before your presence, to worship you together. Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation, for the good things you have given to us in our life. We pray this morning, you will prepare our heart and mind for your word. Lord, I pray if there is someone here in this congregation who is not saved, may you convict that person so that he will come unto your saving grace. And I pray may saints be edified and challenged, and above all, your name be glorified in our midst. Help me as I preach your word this morning. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Burning the bridge. First Kings is a book that starts with an account of the end of the reign of King David up until chapter 5. And it introduces the fabulous reign of King Solomon from chapter 5 until his death in chapter 11. In chapter 12, we see Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, being crowned as a king and also the kingdom dividing into two. That is southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. That is Judah and Israel. In chapter 13, we see Jeroboam being crowned as a king of the northern kingdom and also a young prophet being deceived by an old prophet, causing him his death. And in chapter 14, we see different kind of kings reigning in this era. And in chapter 15, we see Asa, king of Judah, and Basha, king of uh, Israel, war between them, and also different kind of kings reigning in this chapter. In chapter 16 also, we also see different kind of kings reigning in Judah and also in Israel. And also Ahab, the most wicked king of Israel history, reigning in this chapter. And in chapter 17, it introduces the uh, great prophet, prophet Elijah, in this chapter, whereby he is being fed by the woman of Zarephath and also being fed by ravens. And in chapter 18, we see the notable contest between prophet Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal, where he defeated those 415 prophets of Baal. And in chapter 19, we see also the command given to prophet Elijah, where it is in threefold. The first command is to anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, and also to anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, to be king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, to be prophet in thy room. The mantle that prophet Elijah Pass on to Elisha when he found him plowing on the field is a very important item in the history of Palestinian culture. Why? Because of the weather there. In the winter, they use it as a blanket to cover themselves from the rain. And also in the summer, because of the extreme hot weather and the sandstorm, 
they use it to cover themselves when there is a sandstorm. So it was very important item in their culture. And it was same this item or the mantle that Apostle Paul was referring to in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. That the cloak that he left at Troas with Carpus, when Timothy is coming, he should bring that cloak, which is also the same as the mantle. It was very important item for them. So when prophet Elijah passed by Elisha and passed on the mantle onto him or cast the mantle onto Elisha, Elisha understood the significance of the sign the prophet had made because it was one of the usual method of choosing a successor. So he understood the significance of passing the mantle onto him. Burning the bridge is an expression to mean total surrender to God. It is an expression that you are giving everything for the call of God. And it is also an expression to mean an act that you are completely forsaking everything for the calling of God in your life. These bridges are not necessarily something which are sin, but it is something that is very important to you or to us. For example, we see here in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 to 21, that Elisha, burning the bridge of his family, burning the bridge of his fortune, that is the plow. If you notice the verses, and said, and he with the twelve, meaning to say there were twelve people using the plow. Probably Elijah might be the supervisor of that agriculture farm because he was the one in charge. If you read the account and said, and he with the twelve, he cast upon the mantle unto him. So that was the fortune. If we are to estimate the amount of these twelve yoke of oxen and the land that they are working on it, it will total up, up to about 30 million pesos. I'll give you a brief breakdown of this account. The oxen or the ox, ox is a singular form, then the oxen is the plural form. And they are 12 pairs, meaning it is 24 pieces of ox. One live ox is being sold at 150 pesos per kilo. And an average weight of an ox is about 1,000 kilograms. Multiply 150 by 1,000 to give you about 150,000 pesos. Multiply by 24, which is about 3.6 million pesos. That is the cost of the 12 oxen. And an average oxen can plow four acres of land in a day. If one meter square of farmland is being sold at 100, and one acre is equal to 4,100 square meters multiply 100 by 4100 times 48 this will give you about 24 million pesos excluding the instrument that is being used to make the oxen instrument or machine and excluding the probably previous farms of previous agricultural land he already have excluding those amounts so his fortune will total up up to about 30 million pesos. But when prophet Elijah passed on the mantle onto him, he understood the significance the prophet had made. So which he did, that he burned his bridge of his agriculture farm, and he burned his bridge of saying goodbye to his family and leaving all his fortune and his familiar places. In other point number one, to follow God's command. That is to follow God's command. What is this command? The command given to prophet Elijah in verse number 16. And he said, And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel-Mihola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Abel-Mihola is the place where prophet Elisha was from. So he was using that to describe him. And he left the oxen, we see here in verse 19, and ran after Elijah, which he did. It was an act of decision. That is decision to follow. To follow God's command given to prophet Elijah. That is, he bent the bridge of his life in order to follow God's command. 
which he did. It was an act of a decision to follow. And also, second, which he bent the bridge of his life to follow God's command, which he did. It was an act of a declarative to follow or declaration to follow. That is declaring his decision that he, Elisha, that they know in Ebe Mihola, that he is a farmer. He is no longer going to hold the plow that he was using for his agricultural work, but he's going to hold on to a new plow. That is the plow of servanthood of the most high God of Israel. So he was declaring his decision that he had made, that he is resigning or he's leaving everything behind or he's burning his bridge of the farming work in order to follow God's command, giving to prophet Elijah. So which he did, it was an act of declaration to follow. We see here in the book of Matthew chapter 4, the apostles of Jesus Christ, when the Lord was commanding them, how they respond unto him. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. And says, Walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea for the fishes. And in verse 19, he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishes of men. You see, look at the verse 20. He said, And straightway left the, they left their net, uh, their net and followed him. And going from thence, this is also the second account. He saw another two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their net, and he called them. And they, look at the word there, immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. This was their decision and their declaration to follow. It was not because people did not love their family. It was not because these people do not value their work. Because they understood the priorities or the importance of God calling them to surrender their life so that they will become fishers of men. So they declare their decision to follow God's command that was given to them. So that was the same thing that Elisha did when prophet Elijah passed on the mantle onto him, that he understood that God is calling him to be the next successor in the room of prophet Elijah. What is the command that God has given to us as Christians? We have been given the command in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, that we should what? Go ye. Now, what is the specific command God has given to you? It may be that maybe God has been speaking to you to surrender your life so you will be a in the church. I heard Brother De La Cruz make an announcement ways we can serve the Lord. Maybe God is calling you to leave everything that you are doing so that you'll be a full-time worker here in the church, but you are holding on to some things. What is it that God is calling you to leave this morning that you don't want to leave? We see prophet Elisha, when God called him, he did not say, I'm going to discuss with my family. He did not say, I cannot do that because I am working. He did not say, I have something important to do, but he understood the importance or the priorities of having a call from God to serve him full time with his life. Let me ask you this morning, who among you that will love to have a work to work in the White House of America? Or who among you that will receive an offer from the President of United States to be one of his staff? will say no, he will not do that work. Raise up your hand. I'm sure if there is someone here, it will not reach 10 people. Why would you do that work? Because you think that is an opportunity for you to better your life. Because you think that is a privilege to work in the house of White House. But we overlook the house of God and think it's a sacrifice when we are serving God. No, it is not a sacrifice. It is a privilege. Why? Because God is greater than the President of the United States. Because being a servant of God is the greatest responsibility that a believer will have. So if God is calling you to surrender your life to him, don't think it is a sacrifice. 
it is a privilege that God will call you. We see here Elijah burning the bridge of his life to follow God's command. And also the second thing I want us to know, that he burned the bridge of his life to focus on God's calling. That is verse 21. Verse 21. We see here Elijah burning the bridge to focus on God's calling. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instrument of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did it and then he arose and went after Elijah. Why did he burn the bridge? Uh, please, can you give me my water in my bag? Thank you. Excuse me. Yeah, that is the preacher's recharger, water. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Dennis. Why did he burn the bridge? Because he wanted to focus on God's calling. Why? You see here, he was a farmer in Abel Mihola. And we also see in the account of 2 Kings chapter 1, that the head of the prophet, we will see it in 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, sorry, rather, verse 1. That when God was coming to take prophet Elijah, all the prophets of Elijah, all the prophets in the Shiloh, that was their place. If you are being chosen as a prophet of Israel, that time the place those prophets dwell is Shiloh. We can also see that in 1 Kings chapter 14. When prophet Ahijah, the wife of Jeroboam, disguised herself as another woman to go on to him. So we can see that. So Elijah burned the bridge of his fortune and family so that he can fo uh, wholly focus on God calling. Which he did because it was an act of dedication to fully commit himself to God calling. That is to fully commit himself to God calling an act of dedication. The slaying of the ox and the oxen instrument is an act that he was saying to his family and the people that was there during the time he went back from prophet Elijah to say goodbye to his family that he is dedicating himself wholly to focus on God calling upon his life. That he don't want anything to distract him from focusing on God calling upon his life. He bent the bridge of his life to focus on God calling, which was an act of dedication and also an act of desertion. That is leaving his familial places and comfort zone to pursue or to focus God calling. We see in the second part, said, and he arose and went after Elijah and he ministered unto him. Living behind family and friends is one thing that you are saying, that you are focusing on God calling or dedicating yourself wholly to God calling. Living behind friends and fortunes is one thing that you are saying. You prioritize the service of the Most High God. I remember the special number said, it was for me he died. If someone died for you to save you and he's asking you to serve him with your life, would you say that is a sacrifice? No, I don't think so. It is a privilege. So it is something that Prophet Elijah was telling to his family that it is opportunity for him as an Elisha to be chosen as the next prophet of Israel. So he is dedicating himself to a holy focus on God calling so that he will be not distracted when there is a discouragement, probably he have heard of the discouragement that prophet Elijah encountered after his contest with the Baal prophet in chapter 18. In chapter 19, verse 1 up until verse 12, it was those times that prophet Elijah was running away from Jezebel, the wife of prophet Ahab, because he was afraid that prophet Ahab's wife Jezebel would kill him. So he was discouraged that at a point he said to God, God, take my life. And God told him he should eat something. That is where the Lord allowed him to be angels. So he might probably know the discouragement of 
prophet Elisha, a prophet Elijah, when he contested with the Baal prophet. So he said, if I am to do the work of being the prophet of Israel, then I need to burn the bridge of my fortune, family, and friends, and familial places so that I can fully dedicate myself to the work of God so that I can do what the, word, uh, the Lord wants me to do. So he did that in order to focus on God calling. I want to ask you, my brothers and sisters, that are surrendered their life to God, is there something in your life that is distracting you from focusing on God's call upon your life? Is there something that you are prioritizing upon the ministry the Lord has entrusted unto you? If it is something like that, that is a bridge you need to bend. Why? In order for you to dedicate yourself wholly unto God. Burning the bridge or a Christian who have surrendered unto God and still holding on to personal plans and still holding on to things that hinder him from focusing on God calling. It's like a basketball player who is playing a basketball with a lot of backpack at his back. How can he play well? He cannot play well. So it is with a Christian who says, I have surrendered my life to God. I have surrendered my life to Christ. And is still holding on to personal plans. And is still holding on to things that is hindering him. And is still holding on to things that is distracting him from focusing God calling. It is also like an athlete running a race with a loose shoe or with a loose pants. How can you do well unless you tight that uh, shoes, unless you tight before you can run well? So it is with a Christian that says, I have surrendered my life to God. So it is with a Christian that says he has fully dedicated himself to God, but is still holding on to personal plans that is distracting him or her from fulfilling of focusing on God calling. So you need to bend that bridge. It may not be a sin, but if it is distracting you, God wants you to bend that. That is why Prophet Elisha bend the bridge of his family, bend the bridge of his fortune, bend the bridge of his friend, so that he can fully focus on the call of God upon his life. It is also like a Christian who is trying to seek some personal interest before the interest of the Lord Savior. You need to dedicate yourself wholly to the call of God so that God can use you fully. God cannot use you fully if you do not fully dedicate yourself, if you do not desert the things that are pulling you back, if you do not desert the things that are causing distraction upon your ministry that have been entrusted unto you. Not use you fully to achieve what he wants to use your life for. This is why you need to burn the bridge of your life in order to focus on the call of God. And the third thing I want us to see also from the act of prophet Elisha that he burned the bridge of his life in order point number three to fulfill God's calling. To fulfill God's calling, we see the last part in verse 21. And he ministered unto him. And he ministered unto him. And he ministered unto him. We see here a, as Elisha being a determined person. As a determined person. Why is he a determined person? We read this account in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 on to 6. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 up to 6. And it came to pass, when the Lord will take up Elijah to heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal, that is one city. And Elisha said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And verse 3, And the sons of the prophets came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou the Lord will take your master from your head? And he answered and said, Yeah, I know. Hold thy peace. Why? Because he was a determined person. 
fulfill the call of God upon his life. In verse 5, And the sons of prophets, that's where Jericho, came unto Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? This is the second time. Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry here, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. We see here in his determination to follow Elijah wherever he go. See here as a determined person to fulfill the God have called unto him. We see here as a determined person to be in the center of we see here as a Hello? Yeah. The mic is troubling me small. Okay. Yeah. We see here as a determined person to fulfill the calling of God upon his life because of his determination and his faithfulness to serve as the ministry or to serve as a servant that God has called him to replace prophet Elijah. We also see in the second part, receiving a double portion of prophet Elijah's spirit. A double portion of prophet Elijah, prophet Elijah's spirit. That is in verse 9 to verse 15 in 2 Kings. Verse, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 15. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so unto thee. Here in the book of 2 Kings, it records 16 miracles performed by prophet Elisha. In the book of 1 Kings, it is recorded of eight miracles done by prophet Elijah. Why? Because he was the determined person to fulfill God's call upon his life. In result of that, he received the double portion of his life. Burning the bridge is an act, as I said in the introduction. You are completely forsaking everything for the call of God. Elisha knew the priorities of being called by God to serve as the next prophet of Israel. So he burned the bridge of his life to one, to follow God's command given to prophet Elijah, and two, to focus on God's calling, and three, to fulfill on God's calling. What is the ministry that God has called you to fulfill in here in the church? Maybe you have been called to be the Sunday school teacher or probably to be the music teacher or probably to be an administrator of this church. If God has put you in a ministry here, we need to be determined person to fulfill it until the time God will say, it is enough, come and take your rest. And if we are faithful, to fulfill that ministry that has been entrusted unto us, we are rest assured we can do a double portion or do twice a great as our predecessors have been done before us. The missionaries, the pastors, the teachers, and previously all the staff and workers did their part. That is why Baptist Bible Church of Santa Mesa is still the church of today. Here is the challenge I want to throw to us all this morning, as the special number goes, if Christ died for you, what can you do in return for the life that he has given to you? Will you say you sit here in the church and do nothing? Will you say it is a sacrifice to serve the Lord? Yes, we may sacrifice something, but that is not sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice is that of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he being God, became the servant so that you and I can be free from the bondage of sin. If he's asking you, he's telling you this morning to surrender unto him your life, would you say no? If this morning he's challenging you to give your time, to give your life to him fully so that he can use your life in order to fulfill the mission work of God, would you say no? 
Maybe God is calling you to a foreign land, but you are hesitating, or you don't want to surrender your life because of your families, or because of the maybe some benefit you are getting, or because of the money you are making from your work. If God is calling you to surrender your life, know this. He had a plan for you that he will provide for your needs. So do not worry about the needs of your family. Do not worry about the needs when you surrender your life. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow itself will worry about you. Sufficient for the day is up to the Lord to give. So if God is calling you, what you need to do is to say, Lord, what will you want me to do? I will close with this illustration story from a story I read. It is about a conqueror by name Hernan Cortes. Maybe most of you are familiar with this story. In the 16th century, he landed in Aztec Kingdom with 600 soldiers, with only one mission to fulfill. That is to conquer the land of Aztec Kingdom. The land of Aztec Kingdom have 10,000 warriors. And Hernan Cortes with his soldiers, when they landed at Aztec Kingdom during that time, that is 16th century, he asked the soldiers to burn the boat. They did not want to do it, but he instructed them, as the military law says, do before you complain. So they did as their captain or commander commanded them. So after they burned the boat, he asked them, do you know why I ask you to burn the boat? They answered no. He said, you see this land? The whole of this Aztec kingdom. Our mission here is to, one, is to conquer the land. Or two, to die here in the land. So if you want to see your families again, then we need to fulfill our mission. That is to conquer our land. And this they did with 600 soldiers against 10,000 soldiers. Why? Because they burned the bridge that will cause them to be distracted. Because they burned the bridge that will let them run away. Because they burned the bridge that will let them not fulfill their mission of conquering Aztec kingdom. So if God is calling you this morning, you need to burn the bridge of your life. Maybe the bridge of you may be families, or maybe it may be work, or maybe it may be a geographical separation that you are afraid. If God is calling you, know that he will give you the perfect protection that you need. Or sometimes it is also the problem with the parent because some of the children are the one working to feed or to provide for the need of the family. If you are a parent and your child have a definite call from God, you need to say, son or daughter, I will let you go and serve the Lord. Now I see it is a privilege God is giving to you. I will let you go wherever the Lord is leading you to go. I will let you go and serve him with your life. Don't hold back or don't be the bridge that someone will not be able to fulfill God's call upon his life. Don't be the bridge that someone will be distracted in fulfilling God's call upon his life. The mantle of prophet Elisha has been passed on, uh, prophet Elijah has been passed on to us. The mantle of the Great Commission has been passed on to you and me. So what will you do? What will be your response this morning? Will you say, Lord, here I am. I will take hold of the mantle. Will you say, Lord, I will cross over the bridge this morning and give you my life so that you can use my life to accomplish the purpose of your life. Elisha, bend the bridge for the great commission or the mantle of Elijah that was passed on to him. Now it is our time as a Christian to do the same thing. Will you today this morning say, Lord, here I am. I will bend the bridge of my life. Will you today say, Lord, I will cross over the bridge that is hindering me to fulfill the ministry you have put on my life or the ministry you have called me to serve. Will you this morning say, Lord, I am ready to serve you with my life, no matter where you will lead me. Can, shall we rise up and bow our heads down as Pastor Dennis come for the invitation? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for the message that you have given to us about burning the bridge. Lord, we have realized that it is a great privilege that you give to us to serve you, but not sacrifice on our life. We pray this morning and thank you, Lord, 
may saints be challenged and be convicted as Lord this invitation is being called upon. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As we continue with the invitation, the challenge for us to obey God is here. There are mean, many people who have not yet heard of the gospel, not even once, not even heard of the name Jesus. Places such as Ghana, places in Africa, places in Asia, and even right here in our country, there are many people who haven't heard the clear presentation of the gospel. As the gospel has been preached, and many of you have come to the saving knowledge as it has been preached here, the good news about Jesus Christ who came into this world, God's only Son, who took on humanity, who became like us, taking the form of a servant, taking the form of man, live a perfect life, and he died a sacrificial death. He died a substitutionary death. As an offering for our sins. And was raised from the dead on the third day. So that those who would believe on him would have salvation. You have heard that. And if you have not yet heard of that, why not come to him and in repentance and in faith and say, I repent of my sins. I turn to God. I turn to Jesus Christ alone for my salvation. Would you come and receive him? Some of you have heard that. Some of you have already been called by God, being spoken to by the Holy Spirit to give your life in preaching that good news that we would burn our bridges behind. And if there's anyone here whom God has called to proclaim the gospel. Why not respond to him and say, yes, Lord, I'll come. And if there's anyone here whom God has already touched with regards to joining our church, either by baptism or statement of membership, I ask you to come to take that opportunity to obey God. You may please take your seat and right now we have one who came forward before we take the offering we will we have one here who came came forward to join our church by a statement uh, by by statement and then he is a member of Emmanuel Bible Baptist Church and he wants to join our church and he is the he she is the wife of, of brother Pastor J. Rapacon. Okay. And if you as members of Baptist Bible Church would like to ask, accept him into our church via transfer, would you please say a hearty amen? amen. Any opposed? Of course, we'll not oppose. Po. Uh, welcome to our church, Sister Rose Ann Gregorio Rapacon. Okay. So, at this moment, may I call on all the Answers to please come, and shall we all stand up even as we are going to take the offering? So, answers, Pope, uh, please come forward, and as we are going to take the offering, uh, please be ready, and please prepare also uh, our gift to God. Uh, at this time, we ask Brother Mark Busoso to please come and lead us in our offertory prayer.
Let us pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you again, Lord, for this another opportunity to be able to gather here to worship you, Lord. And even this time, another opportunity to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with throughout the week and throughout this month. We pray, Lord, that as we cheerfully give this portion, pray that you multiply it to, as, it, it will be, as it will support the different uh, ministries of this church and to support the different needs of our missionaries. Again, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We recognize, Lord, that everything that we have comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you blessed by the speaker? So may we not call him again up here so that we would be able to show our appreciation for you. Missionary Adams, it's our great pleasure to show our talking of appreciation for your visit to our church. And let's pray for the people there in Ghana, especially as he will start their work there in Kumasi, that God would greatly use him. Okay, so this is our talking of appreciation. Thank you, Church. God bless you. Okay, what? I, I think okay now. It's okay. Thank you again. Okay, before we have the, we have, we're going to call the BIP, the BIP, uh, the our visitors. Uh, shall we call on Sister Sherry to give an announcement so that everybody could uh, could know, particularly the mothers. Good morning to everyone. It's great to see you, and we're so excited that we can have church, and we're excited that we're going to have Mother's Day, and that is next Sunday. We want to honor all of our mothers, but we also want to um, recognize all the ladies and single, um, single ladies and all the ladies of the church because, you know, you might be a spiritual mother. In some way or another, we influence someone. So we do want to recognize all the mothers especially, but we are having a lunch for all the ladies. So please come. I think you were given a card like this when you came in, and you, you are welcome to come. We hope you will come. It will be a great time of fellowship because I think we all need encouragement. And uh, our speaker next Sunday is Brother Matt Wolf, and his wife will be joining us. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to a great Sunday. Be sure to invite um, other ladies, other women to come and join us, especially mothers, okay? Um, I know some of us, our mothers are still with us. Some of us, our mothers are already in heaven. But you know what? We want to rejoice. We want to... Um, thank the Lord for all of his blessings. So I hope to see you next Sunday. Bring a visitor, bring someone with you, and let's look forward to a great time of fellowship next Sunday. I would ask if you could um, sign your name in the back. If you know that you're coming, that would be great. We have um, Bebeth, I think, and Carol will be there. So don't miss this. It'll be um, a time of encouragement. Okay, so this time I would like to recognize uh, our first-time visitors. So uh, we, will, we would be glad to welcome you there downstairs uh, in our VIP lounge. So if there's anyone here is the first time to visit our church, uh, would you please stand up? Sino po yung mga first-timer lang po yung first time lang naka-attend ngayon? Okay, so we have one. Uh, may we ask, uh, may somebody please escort her? and her companions to go 
there to the place where we would like to welcome you. Sino pa po ang mga visitors ngayon? <coughs> okay. So, yun po. Uh, we have a visitor. Mayroon pa po ba dito na, ano, na, na first time na naka-attend? Okay. We're happy for our visitor today. And we would be glad to get to know you more. At this time, shall we all stand up please as we dismiss in prayer? May I ask Brother Carlos to please come and dismiss us in our, uh, dismiss us in our congregational uh, congregation. So. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you Lord so much for uh, gathering us together bringing us safely here in your house of worship, Lord. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for all of the, uh, uh, the preaching that we have heard today, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your call, first of all, uh, calling us to salvation, Lord, and now uh, a call to service, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that each and every one would have a burden to uh, answer your call, Lord, whether it be in a foreign or a local, even in a local church, Lord. Uh, in uh, serving you, Lord. And also, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, give us a uh, uh, safe fellowship as we fellowship together during this lunch lo time and bring us safely b uh, later to th this afternoon as we uh, again worship you, Lord, in, in our worship service. And all of these things we ask and pray in the mighty name and sweet name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>